Please turn to page 10. I always say that if you have a question, you should ask because we all might learn something together. On page 10 last week, somebody asked me about question four. A toy for my brother's children. The answer begins with a noun, so the question should begin with what? And because it says I'm making, the question should be, what are you making? Oh, sorry, because the answer is a noun, it's not an action. The answer should be, what are you making? Not, what are you doing? All right, so the answer here is, what are you making? All right, the homework was pages 13 and 14, right? All right, page 13. Number three, it's asking about time, so how long? And then it's using the perfect aspect. How long have you had your old bike? Number four, it's asking about frequency. So it's how often? How often do you ride your bike? Now, the answer also includes a week. So the question should not include this. If you're asking how often each week, then the answer would not have to say a week. So the correct answer is, how often do you ride your bike? Uh, principle of conservation of information. Uh, to prevent redundant information. Number five, uh, this is saying a way, right? Get to work by doing this, this is a way to do something. So it's how do you usually get to work? Or you can say, how do you get to work? How do you get to work? Uh, because the answer it uses the word usually, so the question does not have to. So right, if the question was, how do you usually get to work? then the answer would simply be, I ride my bike. The answer would not repeat the word usually. Number six, yes or no question. And it's in the future. Are you going to ride your bike to work tomorrow? Number seven. The, the hint is because, so it should be why. And it's the past. So why didn't you ride your bike to work today? Number eight, asking about a time. When did Jason get his new bike? Number nine, asking about a person who broke Jason's new bike. Number 10, asking about a thing. And it is the object. So the answer is, what did Billy break? Number 11, this is the subject. So what was broken? Number 12, by doing this. Again, this is a way, it is a method. So how 
How did Billy break Jason's bike? This is a pretty, it's a pretty stupid way to ride your bike, right? To run into a brick wall. You're telling me Billy didn't see a brick wall in front of him? Okay, 13, yes or no question. And it is the present tense. Does your bike have a comfortable seat? Number 14, this is an adjective. 10 speed, 十段速. Uh, so it's a kind of bike. So the question should be, what kind of bike or bicycle do you have? What kind of bicycle do you have? Number 15, the blue one, which means that there are some choices. And the hint tells you there are two, right? A blue one and a red one. So this one should be, which bicycle is yours? Sixteen, inside my apartment is a place. So this should be where. Where do you keep your bicycle at night? Right, the answer, the reply does not have at night, so this should be part of the question. Where do you keep your bicycle at night? Seventeen. Asking about a person. Who does that bike belong to? Or, if you want to be a bit more proper, to whom does that bike belong? Remember, if you use the word whom and there is a preposition before it, the preposition should also move to the front. Whom, Chime, you jeji to the Hua Yagun Zaban. Eighteen, it's asking about a possessive, so whose bike and then this is the object so whose bike did you borrow nineteen is asking about a location so where is rita remember even if you only have one verb if it is a b verb it also moves to the front so the answer is, where is Rita? Number 20. What is Rita? Sorry, what is she doing? An action is a thing. So the question word is what? What is she doing? Number 21, asking about a length. So this should be how far did Rita ride her bike yesterday? There's an asterisk next to miles, like a xinghao, asterisk. Um, I cut that out of the handout because it's not important, but it's telling you how long is 25 miles. It's it's not short. 22. This is a very useful question. How do you spell bicycle? As you can see, it's asking ping. How do you spell uh, and then you need the quotation marks. These quotation marks tell people you're not asking about the thing, you're asking about the word. So 
this is the way to spell bicycle, the way. So you're asking how, how do you spell bicycle? OK, do you have questions about page 13? All right, let's go to page 14. The reply is I went to a baseball game, so this is. Uh, this is an action, right? To go somewhere, it's an action. So uh, what did you do? Saturday afternoon. What did you do Saturday afternoon? Number two, asking about an object. OK, and then the hint gives you a lot of information. All of this information should be. Either in the question or the answer. So this question should be. Which one did you buy? The small paperback dictionary. Oh, sorry, sorry, what am I doing? Did you buy the small paperback dictionary or the large hardcover one? Uh, this textbook is a bit older. Today, hardcover is one word. Number three, asking about a length of time. So how long did it take you to clean your apartment before your parents came to visit? Number five, Stand on a chair. This is a method. So the question word is how. How can I reach the top shelf? Number six, asking about a thing. So it's what? What do you like the best? Number seven, it begins with because. So your question word should be why. Why didn't you answer the phone when it rang? Number eight, asking about people. Who? Who are you going to the show with? Or with whom are you going to the show? Number nine, asking about a person who repaired the radio. Number 10, look at this reply. It says it's not bad, so it's asking about quality. Quality, the question word is how. How is your hometown in the winter? How is your hometown in the winter? So like if you, if uh, you give your friend something to eat after they eat it, you can ask them, how was it? Was it good? Did it taste good? How was it? 
So this is how is your hometown? Number 11, it's an action in the present progressive. So what is Jack doing? Number 12, a person after a preposition. So again, you have two answers. Who is he playing tennis with? Or with whom is he playing tennis? Thirteen, an action. So it's what? What is Anna doing? Uh, by the way, to serve the ball in Chinese is fa chou, to begin a rally. Number 14, asking about a thing. So it's what? What is she throwing in the air? Fifteen. What are Anna and Jack holding? A racket is the thing you use to hit the tennis ball. It'll want you by. Sixteen. What is between them? So, like in the middle of these two people, what is between them? Number 17, where are they? Eighteen, asking a duration of time. So it's how long have they been playing? Nineteen, who is winning right now? Twenty, who won the last game? OK, questions? All right, no questions. So let's get into this week's unit. Negation for thing. So the easiest way to negate a sentence in English is to add the word not in the middle of the verb phrase before the main verb. This is the verb phrase. So you add the word not in the middle of the verb phrase before the main verb. Now, sometimes your verb phrase only has one word. In this case, you must add a word into your verb phrase. And then you can put in the not. If you're reading a slightly older kind of English, you, they might do it like this. But we don't do this today anymore. If you read it, now you know what it means, but please don't write it. Uh, in fact, they might even do it this way.
Again, if you read it, now you know what it means, but please don't write it this way. This is an older kind of English. Now, this kind of negation, uh, you can also shorten, right? You can turn, you can uh, shorten the word not and add it to the previous word. So uh, let's do it here. Right, shortening will not to won't. Uh, this is one of the few abbreviations that don't look like the original words. The others are uh, should, shouldn't, must, mustn't, need, needn't, can, can't, um, do, don't, does, doesn't, did, didn't. Right, they all look like their original words. Only will and won't uh, don't look like this. Another one that doesn't look like its original word is. Um, This one. I am shortened into ain't. This is usually considered informal English. I should say that these contractions, xie, are all considered informal. They exist because this is how people actually speak. And so if you need to write down what people say exactly, you can use a contraction. But if it's just regular writing, it's better to be formal and separate the two words. Um, so the word ain't is actually very famous for being an entirely new contraction that English teachers usually hate because it's not pronounced in a so-called correct way um by correct meaning like uh educated white americans but of course we know that whatever is correct is however native speakers use the language and native speakers do use the word ain't so it's not incorrect it's just very informal I mean, the only word that comes in front of am is I, right? So it's the same thing. Uh, although I guess you can also. Uh, shorten are not. It should be aren't right. But the informal version is also. Ain't. If you want. Uh, and then there's one more that you should know about, which is uh, the negation of can is, of course, cannot. But in English, the word cannot is one word. I don't know why. That's just the way it is. Right? Will not, two words. Am not, two words. But cannot is one word. And if you don't believe me, you can flip open any book in English that uses the words cannot, and it will be one word. Um, but of course, when you shorten it, it's still only one N, not two. Just like the others. Um, by the way, have I mentioned this? How? OK, so if you sometimes have trouble telling apart the words can and can't please raise your hand like if somebody says can't and you hear can or if someone says can and you hear can't right please raise your hand oh you guys all know how to do this great i can skip the next part um the reason a lot of people mishear these two words is because the difference is not in the T. It's not can and can't. It's can and can't. The can't is shorter. It stops earlier. And also because 
usually the word can is not emphasized. So we don't say I can go home. We say I can go home. Can I can go home. And so if it turns into can't, the word can't gets emphasized and there's a big difference between I can go home and I can't go home or I can't go home. So next time you watch a TV show, you can pay attention to this difference. OK, so that's the first kind of negation, adding the word not. Uh, there are two more kinds I want to talk about today. The second kind is negating indefinite pronouns. So like. Um, You know, everything, something, anything, and the negation here is nothing. And then, you know, you have the everyone, etc., and the negation here is nobody. Well, I guess no one, right? I'm, I'm talking about ones, no one. If you're speaking, or I guess if you're writing British English, you can also say, or you should say no one. So American English, it's two words. British English, it's uh, connected with a hyphen. Uh, and then everybody, etc. This is negated as nobody. Uh, and then you have all, some, a few, this series of words, the negation is none. Now, here's the thing about none. It is both singular and plural. It depends on whether you expect the original word to be singular or plural. Um, or I should say, like, uh, if you're talking about, if you're negating, like, set people or things separately, or if you're negating them together. So, for example, uh, if your sentence is something like, Ten English teachers are gathered here, but none of them speaks Chinese. Speaks is singular. So you're saying out of these ten teachers, if you pick any single one of them, no matter who you pick, you will not pick someone who can speak Chinese. So you're negating one by one. Ega ega folding. Or Ten English teachers are gathered here, and none of them are Chinese. In this case, none is plural because you're saying uh, Chinese is a group of people. It's a kind of person. It's a group of people. So maybe it, you, it, in the realm of possibility, maybe there would have been one Chinese English teacher, might have been two, might have been nine or even ten. There's you're not negating one by one. You're negating the whole group of English teachers who are Chinese. So it depends on the context. Are you negating one by one? Or are you negating like group by group uh, or more than one at the same time? OK, so. Uh, in this class, I've been talking about grammar as a set of rules, right? The structure of English sentences. 
if it does this, then do that. But English grammar is not complete. It, it cannot cover every situation. Sometimes you have to look at the actual situation. Uh, the first sentence, you're asking these teachers one by one. Uh, can uh, that's not a good way to say this. Uh, the first sentence. If some of these English teachers can speak Chinese. The proficiency of their Chinese will not be the same. The way that they learn the, the language, the way that they use the language will not be the same. So you are considering each individual teacher. In the second sentence. If a teacher is Chinese or if two or three teachers are Chinese, they will all be Chinese according to the same definition. So you can put them together as a group. So it's plural. Does that make sense? OK, how about this? That's also not hold on, hold on. OK. None of the politicians are ready. The idea is if you are ready, then you can do it. It doesn't matter the kind of ready or the way that you got ready. Either you are ready or you are not. So the if you do look at this group of politicians, you can separate them into two groups, ready and not ready. In this case, the group that is ready has zero people, but you're still looking at two different groups. You're not considering each individual politician. In the second example, to run for office, each politician can only run for one office. So this sentence is about each individual politician. Like, OK, it, you, if you try to divide the politicians into those who are willing to run for office, and those who are not willing to run for office. The office that they are considering will very likely be different offices. Right, if you're ready to run for office or sorry, if you're willing to run for office, the thing that you are willing to do will be different for each individual politician. Does that make more sense? It's reflecting a way of thinking about these people or about the objects that you're considering. Are you thinking about them as different groups, even if one group only has one person or even no people? Or are you thinking about it as individual people, no matter how many groups they create? I think I'm making it worse. OK, let me think of an example that you might understand better. The first one, none of my classmates are here, is plural because you're dividing your classmates into two groups. 
are they here or are they not here? Even if there's a group of people that has zero members, like even if everybody is here or if nobody is here, you still have two groups. The second one understands the teacher. There are many different ways of understanding the teacher, right? Like if you take a group of your classmates and you ask them, do you understand the teacher? And they all say yes. And then you give them a test. They are not going to get exactly the same score. So there are different levels of understanding. So when this person says, yes, I understand the teacher and the next person says, yes, I understand the teacher. They are talking about two different things. So when you say none of my classmates understands the teacher, you're talking about a singular determination. You're looking at one. You're looking at your classmates one by one. OK, uh, go home, watch the recording a few times, see if you can get the logic. Um, the good news is if you use this the wrong way, most people won't care. They will still understand what you're trying to say. At most, they will think you made a typo. Uh, so it's not a big issue, but the concept, uh, there is a conceptual difference. The idea is different. OK. Uh, and then another kind of negation is. If you negate the whole sentence. Here, none of my classmates, you're negating the group called classmates, but. Um, oh, sorry, there's one more. Uh, everybody, everywhere's and then you have uh, everywhere. Etc. And this negation is nowhere. Only for place, not for time. So there's no such thing as no when, only nowhere. And uh, by the way, this is not a word. Words every time. OK. Um, if you negate a whole sentence, um, something like This is the usual sentence order. They rarely came to class. But you can be also put the adverb at the end, right? They came to class rarely. If you put the adverb at the beginning, you have to flip the verb order, right? You just like a yes or no question, you move the First word in the verb phrase to the front. If the verb phrase only has one word, you have to add a word and then move it to the front. Now, this is negation. Rarely did they come to class. I, I guess I should use the word hardly. Hardly did they come to class means they did not come to class. I know it says hardly, which means very few or very seldom, but in everyday life, if you say this, people will think they did not. They will not think, oh, only once, only twice. They will think they did not. So it's also a negation. Rarely, hardly. Um, any low frequency word that begins a sentence. So. Never is, of course, never very low frequency. 
seldom, rarely, hardly, seldom. I think those are the most common, right? Um, you can even say few, right? Few people, not a few. A few means one or two. Few people means nobody. Or if you're ta if you're asking about how uh, a question of degree, chendu, then the answer would be little. Little did they care means they did not care. Or I guess you should say I, I have a better example. Little did they know means they did not know. It's the same meaning. OK, so far any questions? I have one more thing to add, and this is going to blow your mind. If you have to negate more than one thing at the same time. What is the negation of this sentence? All of my classmates are here. How do you negate this sentence? I actually already gave you the answer above. None of my classmates is here. If you try to say. All of my classmates are not here. You're not negating the whole sentence. This is the same thing as. Um, not all of my classmates are here. This doesn't translate into Chinese. In Chinese, no matter where you put the word not, the not, the meaning is the same. In Chinese, it means the same thing. But in English, the meaning is different. Not all of my classmates are here means some of my classmates are here. You're negating the word all. You're not negating all of your classmates. You're negating one word, all. So uh, you're negating the idea of swoyo, right? So in English, some. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to say. And it gets a bit more complicated if you actually tell, like show the members of the group. So like. Uh, mm, let's see. I invited Alice and Sam. If you say. Sorry to to negate this. You have to say. I didn't invite Alice or Sam. If you say I didn't invite Alice and Sam, what you're saying is I invited only Alice or only Sam. Again, if you say I didn't invite Alice and Sam, you are actually negating the word and. You're not negating both people, you're negating the fact that you put them together. OK, good, that's better, right? So. Uh, Yes, that's exactly what I, what I wanted to say. So if you say I didn't invite Alice and Sam, that means you invited Alice or you invited Sam, but you did not invite Alice and Sam. Um, if you want to negate both, you have to use the word or. I didn't invite Alice or Sam. And it makes sense. It's logic. If you don't invite Alice and you don't invite Sam, then you don't invite Alice and Sam together. So to negate, you have to negate one by one. OK, questions? Um, this this also the logic is also the same for the word because.
Okay, so I didn't invite him because he's too young. If this is explaining why you didn't invite him, you have to add a comma. If you don't add a comma, right, so if you don't add a comma, the logic is like this. So if you have a negation in this sentence, sorry, if you have a negation in this sentence, you are not negating the action. You are negating the reason. You're saying the reason is wrong. Again, in Chinese, it doesn't sound any different. Uh, sounds the same whether you pause in the middle or not. But in English, the first one is, uh, it means uh, what I just said. The second one is, So the first one is, But in English, it looks very similar. Right, so the comma tells you this is supplementary information. It does not change the meaning of the main sentence. Whether you give the reason or not, you did not invite him. But the second sentence does not have a comma, so this changes the meaning of the main sentence. If you add this, it's uh, I didn't invite him. Oh, sorry, I built the sentence wrong. Let me figure this shit out and I'll give you a 10 minute break. We'll continue after the break.
OK, I actually got it right. I was confusing myself. Um, so what I said was exactly correct, but we can add another sentence to clarify. I didn't invite him because he's too young is the same thing as I invited him not because he's too young. Uh, in Chinese, these two sentences look uh, different, but in English, these two sentences are the same. So as you can see in this sentence, you are negating the word because. But in fact, if you don't add a comma here, you are still negating the word because. So I invited him not because this, but because that. So this reason is wrong. This reason is right. The logic is exactly the same if you write this sentence without a comma here. If you're explaining why you have to add the comma, because this is information that does not change the meaning of the main sentence. If the information does change the meaning of the main sentence, there is no comma. Right, this which means you cannot separate this into two parts and look at it separately. It is one complete idea. As you can see from the more clear version here. Right, this is one idea. <laughs> yeah, OK, that's it. I, I have finished talking about negation. Do you have questions? OK, so during the break, a few of your classmates came up to ask questions about uh, last week's homework. Page um, 13. This one, number 11, it should be present tense. Uh, whose bike is broken? Right, because the answer is also present tense. Whose bike is broken? Um, and then, where is it? Page 14? Yes, page 14, number two. I said the answer was, what did you do Saturday afternoon? Another possible answer, so both of these are correct. Another possible answer is, where did you go Saturday afternoon? The best answer is still, what did you do? Because go and went are the same word and you're repeating information. Uh, but it's still a logical question. But the best, an the best question should still be, what did you do? Uh, and then, Number three, the best question is still, did you buy A or B? But another possible answer is, which dictionary did you buy, comma, the small paperback or the large hardcover? Is another possible answer. And then uh, just to clarify, at the beginning of class, um, I talked about a question on page 10, not page 10. I can't find it. Anyways, uh, the question I talked about at the beginning of class today apparently was correct last week. It's just the student who asked me got the wrong answer. The making the toy one. Can't find it. So on page 11, question five, the answer is still, what are you trying to do? The answer is still this one. What are you trying to do? OK, just to clarify now. We have finished talking about negations on page 16. Some of these are questions, 
some of these are negations. Every sentence is wrong. Please correct each sentence. There are eight. I will give you five minutes. And you are always free to talk to a classmate. Hong Tianhan. Hi. So, where is the mistake in number one? Walks. Yes, that is wrong. It should be walk. Pedro is one person. Does is already singular. 
So you don't need to have two singular verbs. So this should be walk. Good. Number two, Lin Yunzhen. Go Jiawen. Lin Yizhen. Yes, number two, did you find a mistake? Ah, uh, she's finding it right now. Correct. It should be, what are you talking about? See, when I point this out, all of you go, ah, that's right. But if I don't point it out, some of you didn't see it. And that's the main challenge for the midterm exam. Even if you know all of the grammar rules, you have to be able to see the mistakes. Number three, Ling Xuan Yu. Liu De Yi. Jasmine. Uh, 就是田野十岁. I don't know how to say Japanese, sorry. Hong Wenxing. Hong Ju. Hi, number three. I'm glad to see you can make it to class this week. Number three. Good. Did is already past tense. You don't need to add this to the main verb. So did you finish your work? Number four, Su Xuanwei. Yes, did you find the mistake? Good, my friend doesn't like her apartment. If you're using ing, it should be a B verb, so isn't liking. Um, so this should be in the original form, doesn't like. Number five, Li Xianghua. Do you work for this company? Good. Same reason, right? If you have a do, uh, then you can't fit in the R. If you can't fit the R, you can't use the ING. So this should all be the original form work. Do you work for this company? You could also say, are you working for this company? The meaning is different. Do you work for this company just means are you a regular employee of this company? Are you working for this company means are you working for this company right now at this moment? You're not thinking about it as your regular job. You're not thinking about it as a career. It's just the current job that you have. So the meaning is slightly different. Number six, Li Tong. No? Oh, sorry, yes, Li Tong. Number six, uh, did you see the mistake? Good, what time did your plane arrive? Uh, so there are actually two mistakes here, right? Did is in the wrong place, and they added an extra object. You can't fit something here. It's simply uh, what time? You just moved it over, uh, but it's still part of the sentence, so you can't add in the it. Good. Number seven, it's on way. Did you find the mistake? So how long have you? It's a have, right? So the verb should be past participle, lived. Have you lived in this city? Or you can say, how long have you
been living. Uh, pa past perfect progressive. How long have you been living in this city? And number eight, Oyanchi. Uh, uh, Ali won't be in class tomorrow. That is correct. The two is extra, right? Won't is will not. The grammar is the same as will. So you wouldn't say will to be. You shouldn't say will not to be. So Ali won't be in class tomorrow. Good. All right, another five imperfect sentences. I'll give you three minutes. Chochi Wei, number one, uh, where's the mistake? Good. Marie will cook. All right. It's perfect. Sorry, it's future tense, so you don't need the S. Marie will cook some chicken and rice for dinner tonight. Number two, Pui Chan. Pui Yu. Yes, number two, where's the mistake? Question two. Good. Where will you be? Where will you be tomorrow morning? Number three, where is the mistake? Good. I won't or will not Ride the bus to work tomorrow. Number four, Yang Ziliang. Number four, where's the mistake?
Question four. I can't hear you, sorry. Oh, yes. So will probably call us. The two is extra. That's what you're saying? Yeah? OK, good. That's right. Because the grammar is the same as will call. Probably is an adverb. Adverbs do not change the grammar of a sentence except for the negating adverb at the very front. All of the other adverbs don't mean anything. Aha, none of the other adverbs mean anything. Okay, and number five, Liu Ling. I am going to, good. I am going to look for a new apartment. All right. Questions about this page? All right, next page, page 17. This seems pretty easy. Let's do it together. Number two, she can see it. The two is extra. Number three, also, she can see it. The S is, are these all the same sentence? Okay, yeah, one to four, the answer is she can see it and all the other stuff is wrong. Number five, can pass you the rice, please? Where is the mistake, Yao Ziqing? Good, can you pass? Can you pass the rice, please? Number six, where's the mistake? Cao Zhen? Number six. Okay, do you see it or can you see it? The meaning is exactly the same, but you have to choose one. Number seven. Wu-Yi-san? They... Did you say they can't? Sorry, can you say again? Yeah. Okay, yeah. They can't go there. It's a negation. You can directly negate the word can. You don't have to add a new word here. So they can't go there. And number eight. Sounds the end. Number eight. OK, this one's a bit harder. The answer is here. They aren't able to pay their rent. Oh, yes, I should add this, right? Um, to be able to just means can. So can't or cannot is the same as to not be able to or even to be unable to. As long as there's only one negation, the meaning is the same. The only reason we need to know be able to is because the word can has a past tense, couldn't, but it does not have a future tense. What is the future of can? will be able to. 
That's the only reason we need to know the phrase be able to. All right, we have eight more questions. I'll give you four minutes. Masu, question two. Can you find the mistake? Good. I don't know Sam's wife. Technically, the sentence grammar is correct, but it's not the meaning that the speaker wants to give. Although, wait, let me think about this. No, there is no present progressive of knowing. Uh, the sentence am knowing something is most of the time meaningless. So it should be I don't know Sam's wife. Question three, Ling Shan. Xu Senming. Ling Meng Ru. Li Tong. Question three. My roommate usually, so where's the mistake? OK, this is wrong, but you're also wrong. You're also wrong. It's not watching.
usually, so it's present tense, right? How many people is your roommate? So this should be watches, listens, and goes out. Or sorry, or goes out. Good. Number four, Zheng Yixi. Good, the car started. So again, the grammar is perfect, but the meaning doesn't make sense. A car can only start or not start. You, it cannot be starting unless it's a really old crappy car, but usually it's starting, it's started or not started. So here the car started. Qidong. Number five, Wei Jiaxuan. Chen Zihan. Number five. Good. The uh sorry. Air consists of. You don't even have to know what this means. Air is singular. So it should be consists of. Consist of means that uh everything after it makes up everything before it. Yo sama zuchen. Air consists of. Number six, Wang Yixuan. OK, so the problem is here. But when it says this morning, this is in the past, or it could be in the future. It's not in the present. So it could be will draw, or it says the word looks like past tense. So what is the correct past tense of draw? So the correct past tense of draw is drew. Like in the Taylor Swift song, right? Drew looks at me, Drew. Number seven, Tu Hong Wei. Number seven. Okay, Sally is, that is correct, it's missing an is. In the kitchen eating breakfast, the order can be switched. It's the same. It doesn't matter. There's one more mistake. The comma here. Good. Right now, comma, because the sentence, the main sentence begins with the subject, Sally. Good job. Number eight, Wang Tingxuan. Li Tong. Question eight. Okay, is this spelled correctly? Spell it's wrong, right? Yeah, okay, good. So Last night is in the past. This should be was driving or if you're lazy, drove. And then heard is H-E-A-R-D. There's no E in the middle, right? Good. And number nine, Chen Yisa. Good, what are you talking about? Anyway. I am, right? I'm. I'm talking about because you need a be verb here. Am. Good. Questions about this page? Okay, next page. There are five mistakes in this conversation. I will give you five minutes.
sorry, sorry. This is next week. So we're finished this week. Yay. Um, next week, no class. It's a holiday. And uh, the week after that, we will talk about direct quotations. Uh, so there's no homework. Yay. Have fun. <laughs>